The Watchtower, February 1st, 2012. This issue of The Watchtower opens with the cover series entitled Armageddon. What is it? When will it come? You'll hear three articles entitled Armageddon. What do some say it is? The Truth About Armageddon and When Will the War of Armageddon Come? We begin now with our cover series Armageddon. What is it? When will it come? And the first article. Armageddon. What do some say it is? And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Revelation 16.16, 16, English Standard Version. What do you think of when you hear the word Armageddon? Likely, images of a major catastrophe spring to mind. Although the word appears only once in the Bible, the term is repeated often by the news media and by religious leaders. Do popular concepts of Armageddon match what the Bible teaches? The answer is worth knowing. Why? Because the truth about Armageddon can free you from needless fear, brighten your outlook on the future, and influence the way you think about God. Consider the three following questions and compare popular concepts of Armageddon with what the Bible really teaches. 1. Is Armageddon a man-made disaster? Journalists and researchers often use the word Armageddon to define catastrophes caused by humans. For instance, World Wars I and II have been referred to as Armageddon. After those wars, mankind worried that the United States and the Soviet Union would direct atomic weapons at each other. The media called that potential conflict a thermonuclear Armageddon. Today, researchers who fear that pollution will cause drastic changes in Earth's weather warn of an impending climate Armageddon. What their definition implies Humans have ultimate control of the future of the Earth and all life on it. If governments fail to act wisely, the Earth will suffer permanent damage. What the Bible teaches God will not allow humans to bring the earth to ruin. The Bible assures us that Jehovah did not create the earth simply for nothing. Rather, he formed it to be inhabited. Isaiah 45, 18 Instead of allowing the earth to be totally despoiled by humans, God will bring to ruin those ruining the earth. Revelation eleven eighteen. The footnote reads, In the Bible, Jehovah is the personal name of God. End of footnote. 2. Is Armageddon a natural disaster? Journalists sometimes use the word Armageddon as a label for major natural disasters. For example, in 2010, one report spoke about Armageddon in Haiti. It was describing the suffering, damage, and loss of life caused by the massive earthquake that shattered that country. Reporters and filmmakers apply the term not only to events that have already occurred, but also to those that they fear will happen. For instance, they have used the word Armageddon to describe the imagined effects of an asteroid striking the Earth. What their definition implies Armageddon is a random event that indiscriminately kills innocent victims. There is little you can do to protect yourself from it. What the Bible teaches Armageddon is not a haphazard destroyer of communities. Instead, during Armageddon, only the wicked will be wiped out. The Bible promises that soon the wicked one will be no more, and you will certainly give attention to his place, and he will not be. Psalm 37, 10. 3. Does God destroy the earth at Armageddon? Many religious people believe that there will be a final confrontation between good and evil that will result in the end of our planet. A poll conducted in the United States by Princeton Survey Research Associates found that 40% of the adults surveyed believe that the world will end in a battle at Armageddon. What their teaching implies, humans were not meant to live on earth forever, nor was the earth designed to last indefinitely. God created humans with the intention that they should all die at some point. What the Bible teaches The Bible clearly states that God has founded the earth upon its established places. It will not be made to totter to time indefinite or forever. 
Psalm 104, 5. Regarding earth's inhabitants, the Bible says, The righteous themselves will possess the earth, and they will reside forever upon it. Psalm 37, 29. Clearly, the Bible contradicts many popular concepts of Armageddon. So, what is the truth? The Truth About Armageddon Demonic spirits go abroad to the kings of the whole world, and they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Revelation 16, 14, and 16, New Revised Standard Version. Armageddon, sometimes rendered Armageddon, is the name of a place. That place, however, does not seem to have existed in any literal location on earth. What then is the real significance of the word Armageddon? Why is it so often associated with an event, such as a war? Assembled at the place called Armageddon The original Hebrew word Armageddon literally means Mountain of Megiddo. Although no such literal mountain existed, a place known as Megiddo does exist. It is located at a strategic crossroads in the northwest of the area inhabited by the ancient nation of Israel. Many decisive battles were fought near that location. Therefore, the name Megiddo became associated with war. The footnote reads, Association of a place with war is not uncommon. For example, the Japanese city of Hiroshima, which was obliterated by an atomic bomb, is now a symbol of the threat of nuclear war. End of footnote. However, the real significance of Megiddo is not what battles were fought there, but why they were fought. Megiddo was part of the promised land that Jehovah God gave to the Israelites. He vowed to those people that he would defend them against attackers, and he did. For example, it was at Megiddo that Jehovah miraculously defended the Israelites against the invading forces of Canaanite king Jabin and his army chief Sisera. Therefore. The word Armageddon or Armageddon has great symbolic significance. It is associated with a confrontation, one in which two powerful forces collide. The prophecy in Revelation speaks of a time in the near future when Satan and the demons will motivate human governments to assemble their armies, thus issuing a defiant challenge to God's interests. The attack will result in the death of millions of people when God defeats the invaders. Why would God, whom the Bible describes as merciful, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness, cause the death of so many humans? Nehemiah 9.17 To understand God's actions, we need to answer three questions. 1. Who starts the war? 2. Why does God become involved? 3. What lasting effect will this confrontation have on the earth and its inhabitants? 1. Who starts the war? The war of Armageddon is not an act of aggression by God. Instead, God will defend good people from those who would crush them. The aggressors in this conflict are the kings of the entire inhabited earth, the world's leaders. Revelation 16, 13, and 14. Why the attack? Because, like a puppet master, Satan will maneuver both governmental and military agencies into an all-out assault on those who worship Jehovah God. In view of the emphasis on freedom of speech and religion in some countries today, the idea that governments would crack down on or even try to obliterate any religious movement may seem far-fetched. However, such attacks occurred during the 20th century and are now taking place. The footnote reads, The Holocaust is an example of one government's attempt to stamp out religious and ethnic groups. During the Soviet era, religious groups within the USSR were also severely repressed. End of footnote. Even so, there are at least two major differences between previous attacks and the one associated with Armageddon. First, the scale of the attack will be global. Second, the response from Jehovah God will be of a magnitude greater than any action that he has taken in the past. The Bible describes the confrontation 
as the war of the great day of God the Almighty. 2. Why does God become involved? Jehovah instructs those who worship Him to be peaceable and to love their enemies, so they will not take up arms to defend themselves when this vicious attack comes. If God did not step in to save His people, they would be wiped out. Therefore, Jehovah God's name or reputation will be at stake. If the aggressors managed to do away with His people, it would make Jehovah appear to be unloving, unjust, or helpless. Such an outcome is impossible. God does not want to destroy anyone, so He gives fair warning of what He will do. By means of accounts preserved in the Bible, He reminds all that in the past He has retaliated when His people were attacked. The Bible also warns that in the future, when Satan and his human puppets attack God's people, Jehovah will again step in and meet force with force. In fact, God's word long foretold that Jehovah will destroy the wicked. At that time, there will be no doubt in the minds of the attackers that they have picked a fight with the Almighty Himself. 3. What lasting effect will this confrontation have? The War of Armageddon results in the saving of millions of lives. In fact, it is a prelude to a period of peace on earth. The book of Revelation talks about an unnumbered great crowd who will survive this conflict. Under God's guidance, these will help to restore the earth to the paradise conditions that Jehovah originally purposed. Do we know when this attack on God's people will come? When will the War of Armageddon come? I saw and look, a great crowd, which no man was able to number, out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, come out of the great tribulation. Revelation 7, 9 and 14. The stage is now set for the war of Armageddon. How so? Already there exists a worldwide association of people who serve Jehovah and live by the Bible's elevated moral standards. With God's backing, Millions from all nations, tribes, and tongues are gathering together to form a harmonious, loving brotherhood. That brotherhood exists among Jehovah's Witnesses. Soon, Satan will gather his armies and launch what will be his greatest assault on these peaceable and seemingly defenseless people. How can you be sure of that fact? The Bible describes specific events that help us to know when the Battle of Armageddon will come. Many of the events it identifies are already being fulfilled. Events you are seeing fulfilled Jesus' disciples asked him how people would know when the conclusion of the system of things was at hand. Matthew 24, 3 Jesus answered by pointing forward to a period when, as he said, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after another. He then said, All these things are a beginning of pangs of distress. Matthew 24, 7 and 8. The Apostle Paul described this same period as the last days, saying that those days would be critical times hard to deal with. 2 Timothy 3, 1. Does it seem to you that those prophecies describe events happening today? Why would this period be so difficult? The Apostle John gives the reason. He foretold that there would be a short period of time in which the activity of Satan and his demons would be confined to the earth. Satan is described as having great anger during this time. Revelation 12, 7-12 Do you sense that there is a spirit of anger and violence among people today, not just in one location, but globally? Jesus also said that during this time of great difficulty, an extraordinary work would be accomplished. This good news of God's kingdom, he said, will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14 Today, in more than 235 lands, Jehovah's Witnesses are preaching the good news of God's kingdom in more than 500 languages. The two Bible-based journals they produce, The Watchtower and Awake, are by far the world's most widely distributed magazines. The witnesses have also translated the Bible into some 100 languages. 
Their work is performed by volunteers and funded entirely by voluntary donations. Could this remarkable preaching campaign be a fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy? The Bible also outlines the events that will lead directly to war between Jehovah God and those who oppose Him. Consider three such prophecies you will see fulfilled. Events you are soon to see happen. Prophecy 1. The Bible says that the nations will issue a significant declaration of peace and security. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-3 They may think that they are on the cusp of solving major problems. However, the events that follow this statement will be anything but peaceful. Prophecy 2 Next, various governments will decide to move against the world's religious organizations. In the Bible, these governments are symbolized by a wild beast, and the world's false religions by a woman who rides the back of the beast. The symbolic beast will unwittingly do God's bidding by destroying religions that falsely claim to represent God. In symbols, the Apostle John describes the drama this way The ten horns that you saw, and the wild beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her devastated and naked, and will eat up her fleshy parts and will completely burn her with fire. For God put it into their hearts to carry out his thought. Revelation 17, 16 and 17. Prophecy 3. Following this successful attack on false religion, Satan will marshal the nations for an assault on those who worship Jehovah God. How will you be affected? If you have not had the opportunity to study the Bible closely, you may find it difficult to believe that the events described will occur. But there is good reason to trust that every detail will be fulfilled and that these events will take place in the near future. The long record of Bible prophecies that have already been fulfilled provides that assurance. Why not set aside some time to find out why Jehovah's Witnesses are convinced that the war of the great day of God the Almighty is close at hand and why you do not have to be afraid of it? Revelation 16, 14. Have them discuss with you what the Bible says you must do to be among those whom Jehovah God protects. What you learn may change your view of the future. End of article.